All right, well, here we are, the end of mini camp, uh, mandatory mini camp. Although we've had such good attendance, it feels like uh, it, it just feels like we're con continuing to work. Excited for these last few days of work, uh, finish on a high note, high intensity, um, and, and get after it, clean up details, find ways to get better these last couple days. Um, so we're looking, looking forward to this work that we're going to get. Um, just a couple notes. Obviously, Jags uh, will need to go uh, on IR, and then um, Andrew will not practice this week. Uh, obviously, he'll talk to you guys in a little bit, so you can. I'll defer to his stuff, but we're not concerned. Um, just still encouraged about the progress, and we'll just being conservative. You sort of gave us the impression last week that might be how it plays out. There's no, the, the missed time, I mean, it's not ideal when your quarterback misses time. What will he have missed and how do you compensate it all? Or you just, like last year, you just move into training camp? Yeah, I mean, he's he has missed some stuff. He's missed the on-field work, but he's gotten so much, so much in the meetings in our second year in the system, talking through things. He's been able to... Andrew's really been able to have even more input into the system this year in the meetings, putting his imprint on what we're doing. Now knowing what he likes and what he doesn't like and why he likes what he likes within our system, I think it's taken the meetings uh, to a, a higher level. And even when we're not just the quarterback meetings, when it's, when it's the quarterbacks, Nick and Marcus and myself, um, but even in the offensive meetings, just the voice that he has in there, making sure, talking to receivers, tight ends, backs, uh, he's had a real strong presence this whole offseason. Well, more so than last offseason. I mean, this doesn't compare to last offseason at all. Yeah, it doesn't even compare. I mean, sure, he had input last year, but not even close to the same level. Um, last year, we were in Staun, and it was more in listening, and a few comments here and there. This year, it almost feel, he's a big part of everything. He's obviously, um, you know, we've said from the beginning this is minor, and I'm not saying I'm worried about it, but I, I do think fans get a lot, they ask a lot of questions. I mean, I think this is what, like week three, four, whatever it is. That does feel like a long time. Uh, is this it's, maybe slightly more severe than we initially thought? or? It, I mean, within the calf strain injury, it, I would say it's on the longer side. I don't think it's out of the range of, of a calf strain, um, but it is definitely on the longer side. Frank, given the missed time this spring, how important will it be for Andrew to throw in between the end of mini camp and the start of training camp with guys like Devin and Paris? Yeah, you guys know Andrew. I mean, he'll have a plan. We've already talked about it a little bit, what that's going to be. Um, so, you know, I've gotten, you know, we, we've talked about that. I, I'm sure uh, he'll make a lot of progress in that time. And, and he's been doing stuff right now to make progress in that area. Um, with what he can do, so I, I feel very confident about it. Is the start of training camp at all up in the air and slightly, or is it like a no-brainer that he's going to go day one? I mean, in my mind, it's a no-brainer. I mean, it's, you know, you never know. I mean, you can always re-aggravate something, I, I suppose. Um, you know, he starts working out, this thing heals in the next week, and then he goes out and he's working out in the next couple of weeks and re-aggravates something. So, um, but barring any anything crazy, in, in my mind, it's a more of a no-brainer. I know training camp's far away, but do you expect the same schedule for him throwing-wise as he did last year, or do you want him to throw more at, at training camp? Probably be a little bit more than he did last year. I, you know, there's still going to be days. He and I have talked about this already. There's still going to be a day or two off here or there. Um, we'll be selective about that. In fact, we're, you know, we're meeting, um, you know, before we part ways here in a little bit, just to talk a little bit about what that plan for training camp will be. We'll map that out. Well, it'll be very uh, disciplined and methodical and the reasons why we give him the days off that he has off. Frank, over the last, what, 10 weeks, like what? Where can you make the most progress? Is it in terms of implementation of schemes and all that, or is it in terms of just like building sort of a competition and seeing how things shake out? Because you're not really playing real football just yet. Right. Um, you know, I, I think the progress is uh, the progress we're trying to make the most in is a continued improvement in fundamentals and technique. You know, um, when we're talking to the offense, and Nick says this all the time to the offense, you know, we want the, the understanding of what to do and why we're doing things to be so automatic that we can spend a lot of time working on the fundamentals and technique because uh, that's, what, that's how you create more separation in a break. Um, when you and you got to win your one-on-one matchup. So a lot of this time is that, 
And then, uh, and it's also time for some of our new, the rookies and guys like on offense, you know, guys like Devin to get plugged in, build some chemistry, understanding of what we're doing. And then obviously on the flip side of the ball, Justin and, and the like. Coach, you mentioned that attendance has been so high this offseason. How satisfying is that for you that that's the culture that this team has set in the offseason? I'm very satisfying, and I've said it. I'll continue to say it. It's all the players. You know, it's it's the players who, you know, want to be here, guys who have been here, though, especially, you know, the Adam, Justin, uh, Andrew, T.Y., Costanzo, those guys who have been here the longest, you know, the guys who you might think miss some, um, those are the guys leading the way and being here. One of, the, one of the, I guess, under the radar personnel moves you guys made this offseason with Spencer Ware. What have you seen about? What have you seen, and what are your expectations? Yeah, he's got very natural back there, Spencer. Um, you can he understands the game. Um, it comes easy to him. He sees it easy. Uh, I was also very attracted to his physical toughness. You know, just you know, you can't see that as much out here, but just knowing his past and watching tape on him. Um, and his mentality, he's got, he fits our mold. He's, this is a tough dude and uh, tough yards, not afraid to block. He's the kind of guy that, not that we do much of this, but if you ever wanted to get in an eye formation, um, you could put him there. You, you know, he's the kind of guy you could count on to get tough yardage. He's, he's proven that uh, in his career. Is he a, he's a high school quarterback, or he was. Is he a candidate for your emergency QB role, or do you know if that guy would be here? Um, yeah, no, that's always a, that's always a fun process to, to, to find out who the emergency. They all think they're emergency quarterbacks, <laughs> but you know we don't we don't give that title too easy. But he, he has brought that up to me, so uh, he will he will be in the line of guys to uh, to uh, to try out for that position. When's the last time you had to have an emergency quarterback before you go down to your hunter kicker or running back? I have not had it happen to me uh, in a game. Thank, thankfully, yeah. Frank, you and Matt both were talking about a linebacker was so wide open. Is there any position you look at right now and consider it, wow, come training camp, but it's really up for grabs, how the playing mm -hmm. time's going to play out? Um, you know, I'm, we're just trying to create as much competition as we can in each position. We really are. And, uh, and it'll play itself out. And sure, there's, you know, there's guys who are established that you think, you know, are in, leading in those positions and, and they've earned that right. But um, we got a lot of practices to go. We're always going to play the best. We're always going to play the best guys. Uh, everybody on the team wants that, and every in this league, we all know that. So, um, Chris has done an amazing job of continuing to build the roster and make this thing really competitive. Everyone here knows it's going to be harder to make this team this year than it was last year, and that, that's a good thing for us. Just because you bring back 21 and 22 starters doesn't etch in stone. All of those guys. No, that's a good point. That's a really good point. Um, that's a really good point because we're continuing to add, and it is competitive. And and you know how we feel. We we love the guys that are returning. We every one of them. But um, that's the nature of this business. We all accept that coming into it, and we know it. Last year, with your your back to going back to the running backs for a little bit, you've had pretty clearly defined roles back there. It felt like. I mean, do you anticipate that will be the same this year? Maybe the roles are different, but. You, you feel like they'll be pretty clearly defined, Marlon being sort of the same position. And Naheem, you know, depending on Campbell and his role in the slot, maybe he gets impacted. I mean, just what do you anticipate? Um, you know, I anticipate that we will, it'll be an ongoing decision. That uh, The initial thought is, yeah, it'll be much like last year. Um, you know, Marlon's our main guy. Um, and then from there, you know, Naheem's the main third down guy because of the stuff that he can do. Right, and and then uh, you know, other than that, Jordan and Jonathan, you know, are vying for that other spot, and Spencer are vying for that other spot to be Marlins kind of mixer, um, and and yeah, I mean, uh, if Paris with Paris in the slot, that could affect Naheem a little bit. It, it will ultimately probably affect him a little bit, um, but that's a, a good thing, and we'll just continue to fine tune, and then by game plan, I think that's one of the things that we've done well is figure that out week to week, how to apply the personnel against the defense that we're playing. And you've talked all off season about wanting to be a top five running team and be more consistent. Once you got people together, it was a pretty good running game after the first month. Can you be top five if you still throw the ball 61% of the time, or does that have to impact 
you know, throw the ball? Yeah. No, I, no, we, yes, we can. And um, I, I think two examples of that are we weren't top five. Like when you look at our last 10 games of the year last year, we were, and if you just take those 10 weeks of the season, <clears throat> we weren't top five, but we were top 10. I don't know, seven or eight or something like that. Um, and we still threw it a lot. Uh, in 2017, when I was with the Eagles, um, I believe, you correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe uh, the Eagles were number four rushing that year when they won the Super Bowl, and we still threw it a lot. So, yes, it can be done. So this is going to be a 60-40? Uh, yeah, it, it's probably still 60-40, but you can still be a top five rushing team running it. Uh, maybe it's a little bit more than 40. Maybe it's 58-42, whatever the case may be. Um, ultimately, you know, we want to be le we want to have more four minute offense this year than we did last year. So, um, you know, that's always a big thing about being a top five rushing team. You know, being more finite four minute offense at the end of games that, that always helps those numbers as well. Receptive to that, right? I mean, even after the first month when it was like 58 passes or whatever, he, he wanted that as much as anybody. He wanted that as much as anybody. I mean, you, you hear no. In fact, he's the one wearing Quentin's hats. You know that he's wearing that hat around. You know, so he's he's proud. He know he knows what that means for our team and for him. It's a good thing. There's no there's no fear that we're not going to throw it enough. Uh, not at all. It's on the contrary. He's really wearing the hat. Oh yeah, no, he's wore the hat for sure. Literally wore the hat. <laughs> We've asked yeah, about, <laughs> yet about the rule change and you being able to challenge pass interference calls and things like that. Have you thought about just how your role within a 60-minute game might change with, with that? Yeah, we've talked a lot about that, you know, with, with our analytics guys that, that we talk to during the game. And, um, you know, it, we probably talk, we've probably talked about it almost every week, even in the offseason since that's been done. Look at a few clips here and there, talk about strategies. George Lee does a really good job on that stuff of thinking, you know, helping us all think through a lot of the different scenarios. And when he see, he's always looking at additional clips and we'll look at things and say, hey, what do you think here? Hey, here's a strategy here. We need to hold these timeouts or uh, we need to hold these challenges, so on and so forth. So um, that's an ongoing discussion. It's a group discussion. You really got to collaborate to think through all the scenarios that can come up because those are big decisions.